So then eventually, do you think you'll be able to program in like a launch control? Yes. Oh. <laughs> well, we're freeway speed. Oh. Yes. Okay, 80 like that. That was so quick. I feel like you're staying true to the Porsche, I, I guess the direction that they're going now, because they have a turbo electric yeah, vehicle right now. They right? do. Right? Which... So this is turbo, <laughs> meaning it's fast, not that it actually has a turbo. Correct, even though I love all the turbo noises, and uh, that was one of my favorite parts about this, and it's a, I can't say original form, Look at analog. That. All right, so we actually had a chance to feature one electric Porsche before. Uh, uh, our mutual friend, Bissimoto, built an electric 935, and that blew me away. Like that seriously changed my perspective on electric performance vehicles. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Are you serious? That's awesome. Because when I stepped on that thing, it felt like the world was ending and me, yeah. I, I, it broke traction right away. Yep. And honestly, it was a bit too much for a, being a street vehicle. But what you've done now is you've built an older looking Porsche. So it's 86, 930 turbo look Porsche that you've converted into a full electric vehicle. So this started as a 1986 SC 911. And then due to another turbo body, having an accident. Uh, this is converted full steel conversion, nothing fiberglass on it to the 930. Pretty much everything came over from it, all the suspension, the 88 turbo motor, and was a daily driver. A uh, couple small race parts put on it, some bigger brakes. This thing had a wind up, right? Like you stomp on it, it has the delay, you hear the turbo start to spool up. And by the time it hit 4,500 RPM, you were finally going. Well, this was the Widowmaker, right? Oh, yes. As the turbo, because this had a turbo motor and you drove this as a, a internal combustion engine yep. vehicle for a while yep. before you converted it to EV. Correct. All of the things of an older car that you end up falling in love with, which any Porsche owner will tell you, you end up falling in love with the little oil leaks and the case leaking and all the little things that habitually needs the DME relays going out. And it was, it was a blast and it had so much character, but you know, it got tricky to start and it got to where it needed a rebuild. And yeah, this thing, and this not... thing was great to drive, but you had to love it. The conversion to this originally was a tough one because do we like it? Is it one of those things that by the time we're done with it, there's new technology out and we're gonna be behind the times. Maybe we could just build the motor and put some more spunk into it, bigger turbo, but then it's not smog compliant. Then we'll have to dirty smog it. And So the decision was made by yourself as a car enthusiast, as a former Formula Drift driver, um, as a wheelman, all of that, you decided, you being a true gearhead, making this really kind of says a statement. It really is a statement in itself. Um, I originally was talked into it by Steve at Analog Motor Company, and he wanted to build a fleet of these and sell classic cars that were converted, and we kind of teamed up to use this as the prototype. It's kind of hit every mark as the R&D of what we want to do moving forward. I have more seat time in it than anybody, but the real show and the real tell is anybody else that hops in the seat. It doesn't lose any of the feel. It doesn't lose 
in my opinion, any of the soul because everything you want the car to do is there immediately rather than waiting for the wind up and waiting for everything to be in that perfect small window of a situation. It's always the torque is max, always. Right, so let's, that's the driving portion. Let's talk yeah. about the look, right? Okay. So if you were to park this where other Porsche enthusiasts could see it, if you did a 360 walk around right now, there's no telltale sign at all that it's electric. Is there? Nope. You can't tell. Not, not one. The look is there. Yep. The only thing that you can see, I mean, I have a diffuser underneath that you can see that it's ducting up to two small coolers. But other than that, you have to basically crawl underneath or pop the rear. Let me pop the rear for you and you can see what, what You know really what would be cool? Up. Is if you put a uh, like a fake exhaust, a fake muff, <laughs> <laughs> or or actually, it's always you know, it's always this that well, gets them. This is just so insane. It's always the the storage area in the back, room up front. Okay, so what am I looking at here? What so right this? now, um, you're looking at the high voltage junction box. You're looking at the rear battery, and you're looking at coolant tanks. Uh, one for the batteries, one for the motor. So two separate pumps, two separate radiators underneath, very small. Now this setup, believe it or not, is the same exact weight distribution and balance front and rear. And it's only a little over 300 pounds heavier than, than stock. So how much did you have to cut, if nothing any at all? This is a non-intrusive kit. So, so this can come out and then four days later, the ICE motor can be bolted back in with the fuel tank and the chassis harness from it's an aim 32 pdm is designed to work with both the electric and the ice motor so that was the longest part of the design is being able to switch back and forth you change your mind in six seven years it goes back and you'll never know um so then where does it actually start uh, in terms of like connecting to the stock vehicle? Like, is it to the axles where it starts becoming a Porsche fully? Or does that make sense? Like, yeah, so it's a, whole, it's a whole rear subframe cradle that's holding the motor, the battery, you know, everything else is bracketed off of there. So if you want to go back to the ICE motor, the mounts are already staying with with the motor and trans, unbolt this one, it stays together, unbolt that one straight in. And then you Four just bolts. connect the axle to yep. that. That's it. Yep. Porsche, just so Porsche is, axle. So this is its a 930 conversion axle to this length. You'd put a stock OEM 930 axle back in. And then, so is this already pre-cut, all of this stuff for it to fit perfectly in this space? This, I mean, we made these in house Oh, okay. uh, the battery box and design was from Electric GT. So, so we, you we still did have to do a lot of custom things to get this to fit perfectly. Yeah, so we bought a kit that was semi-sorted as far as the main components, the battery boxes being the main kind of element, and then all the other bracketry of mounting, you know, the Can charge we take port. take a look under the hood? Oh yeah, here? no problem. This is so clean. <laughs> So then all of this stuff, still factory Porsche, Yeah. So all of this. This is untouched. an upgraded AC unit mm -hmm. that is running off a 12 volt system. They off, also offer a 400 volt system. Uh, the brake system, even though we rebuilt it, it runs a vacuum pump, a super quiet Bosch vacuum pump. Uh, so you have that factory feel because you're not getting any vacuum from the motor. Where does the condenser live then for? So it's, it's actually underneath and in between the wheel, that's this this inlet, and it's going to be a secondary inlet here that used to be the oil cooler. So the expansion of these now is going to be a twin condenser. I see, because normally they mount them on the deck lid of these cars. So yeah, there's a lot of different kind of versions of this. Everyone usually, when you upgrade, goes to a big inlet front bumper. Mm. Um, the problem is always it doesn't work at a standstill. 
you have to be moving. So let me show you here. This is the biggest part. When, uh... That is so cool. So then this, is this pretty universal in terms of where you can charge this? Yes, this is a, a level two charger for this. They, we also have a CCS that we're going to install for fast charging. Then you can get 80% of a charge within 30 minutes. This style of kit will fit 67 to 89. And then we're developing a kit for 964, a 91 backdate we're doing currently. But yeah, this one for the battery design and the motor design, there's a difference between a 911 and 912 as far as the mounting location, but it's an easy kind of switch around for the battery design. And this is important because you're not destroying this car to build this. You're just using the existing space that Correct. where the motor and the gas tank normally will be. And you, that's where the batteries are. Correct. So optimizing kind of every square inch, the smuggler's box has the AC compressor in there, sound deadened, you know, battery underneath here, uh, vacuum pump there, PDM underneath here. So trying to optimize it and still have as much storage space as possible. That's kind of our direction. We've had so many times where we see certain kits, like it's the same thing with an LS swap. Somebody can get an LS swap, somebody get a motor, get taken to 10 different shops, there's 10 different ways to put it together. Mm. Our kind of goal is to have usable, usable space, a place to put the groceries, a place to do anything you want, you know? Yeah, because Put this, your camera equipment in the back. Yeah, this is a, a, a basically, well, this is a theme and this is a kind of build that's gonna happen more and more as EV technology improves because pretty much, this is pretty much the way to keep these vehicles on the road. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, there's always going to be internal combustion engines, at least in our lifetime, Correct. right? But um, this is just a different way to build this vehicle. And we're gonna see later, you could still have fun with it. It's very, very fast. Um, mm -hmm. It handles amazing, stops amazing. Uh, one of the things that's interesting to me is this doesn't have power steering. Correct. When we offer these to the public and we're gonna build it, it's gonna be an option, but I love the feel of the car. To try to keep it that original feel, there was no need to update everything on it. I wanna keep some things how they were. Since the weight balance, we're pretty much dialed on that, it still has the same feel. And the thing that's different with putting quality parts on it you know, we used a lot of Renline, Willwood, you know, KW. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it does have KW suspension. It does. Will and Wood. with that, now, before, when you were going 100 miles an hour, it felt dangerous, right? You really had to both hands on the wheel. You had to grip it. You don't know when that power, the turbo is going to kick in. And then now it's smooth. Now I can drive 120 miles an hour and be on the phone with one hand. It It's a night and day difference on what these have become yeah, once plus, all the parts dial together. Plus you really maximize the, just the wheel well in general, 295s in the rear. This is our coming into a version four. Once the brackets get moved for the electronic e-brakes, mm -hmm. we're able to uh, lower the rear a little oh. bit more. So it does have electronic e-brakes. So oh, you yes. have a separate uh, e-brake, Correct. It's a Willwood caliper just for the electronic e-brake. Correct, it and is, uh, you put it in park, automatically engages, put it in drive, reverse, automatically disengages, and then we have an emergency stop option as well. And that's like a pump or something, or that's like a something that's attached to the front here, nope. or where is it? Full where? electronic. So we have a signal being sent with via CAN message to the PDM that triggers on and off with a time delay. But where is it actually pushing it, where, where is it pushing the fluid? Is there like no a mechanism? No fluid, it's electronic. Oh, it's electric. Yeah. Oh. It's an electronic e-brake. Oh, this is, this yeah, whole that's, unit is electric. Yep. Oh, that's so cool. So it's actually wired oh, right into it. That's awesome. All right, so then let's talk about the motors. Um, okay. Is it one motor or two motors? How so this, this, is a, this is a Tesla large unit. Uh, they make one package Above this, which is the performance package, which is 650 foot-pounds of torque, this is 450, which in my opinion, it's 
quite enough. If we wanted to do a full race car version, 650 would be the solution, but especially with you driving it, it's, I think it has enough spunk. Yeah, 450 foot-pounds of torque from zero RPM. Mm -hmm. How much horsepower does it make? Um, we will put it on the dyno to get some real numbers, but it's hard to know with torque being a calculation for horsepower being a calculation of torque and it being so low. I think it's 500 horsepower, 450 torque is what I would guess with the, uh, the butt chronometer. Right, and I mean, you've driven so many, you've owned, how many cars have you owned? Oh, wow. Uh, hundreds. Hundreds. So. Yeah, so you, you, you have, uh, uh, like, if it's 500, it's a real 500. Yeah, and what, the hardest thing to really navigate is when we gauge 500 in, let's say a Supra or whatever, it's 500 at, you know, 5,200 RPM in that peak moment. But this is 500 at idle, you know, it's 500 at the get go. Mm. So it just feels linear. Like it's hard to really scale it until you're in it because it's on and off. Yeah. Uh, and then, so it is dual motor or a single motor? So this is a single motor. Okay, single motor. Yeah. And then this is something that I'm always fascinated about. How, how does it work? Is there like a LSD or what? Yeah, so this is a Quaif. Um, and that's built one, into the system? Yeah, so we, we added it on. Oh. So you can, you can choose a couple different options of what type you have, but that is what we went, went with for the feel we wanted. Um, now all of these electronics, besides a firmware upgrade, work with pretty much whatever motor you put in there. Like us to switch to the performance motor, easy. Bolt in, unbolt. Yeah, let's, let's talk about the interior. <laughs> there's a couple things different. Obviously there's not a clutch pedal. Correct, it's the same whole unit that's in there. We just deleted the clutch pedal rod out of it. So when it goes back to ICE, it's an easy install. So you unbolt that whole box, goes back in, pin goes in it. No brainer, there's no chop and welding in that. And then so how do you actually connect the throttle to the system? So this is similar to a drive-by wire. We have a potentiometer that is bracketed onto the factory unboltable piece. Factory pedal that just has the push rod attached to it. Another way of doing it is actually putting the potentiometer in the rear and have the factory cable run all the way and pull it. But less moving parts is always better in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, for sure, 100%. Uh, the interior is really nice, very finished. Was it like this when you got this? It was not. So you uh, did all of this stuff. So this is something we, we kind of chose the finish we wanted for the dash, the Alcantara, you know, the stitching. It's, it's so sinister looking. I mean, that's kind of the way to explain it. Black on black on black, yeah. leather. Really, really nice. Functional rear seats if you don't have legs or if you're a little kid. Full sound system, AC, heat. I had a bolt-in cage in this when, when it was in this other form and we ended up unbolting it and putting it back to a, can't really call it a four-seater, but. I love this like GT3 style mm -hmm. pole. Let's, let's talk about all this stuff. So let's start it and let's go through how this actually works. Okay, let me, you can turn it on. Okay, so this normal key on the left side yep. still works, right? Yes. There's no like ignition or anything, you just turn it to on, yep. right? Okay. So everything is powered up. These are all speed hut gauges that have both the EV option or you switch them back over to the speed hut upgraded gauges for the ICE motor. So, so then the mile an hour, is this a GPS based? Like the yes. speed hut, what they normally do? Yep, full GPS based. Got it. Um, we have battery percentage. Oh, this is the battery percentage. Correct. So then at 62 miles range left, when this is at 100, how many miles could you get out of this? So it's, it's subjective on how you drive. 
if you wanted to drive as a, as a normal person, 120 is probably a, a safe set. Mm -hmm. Would driving it like... How we would drive how it. How we would drive it, <laughs> 90 to 100. 90 to 100 mile range. Yeah. Got it. And I see, okay. Over and here we can have... Can you actually tell, you've driven it more than anybody else. Can you mm -hmm. tell the degradation of power? Like, can you tell that it's a lot slower when it's less? I can, um, but that's only if you're driving it full tilt. You know, you can tell that it's in its fastest mode with the drive mode turned up all the way. Zero to 60 is 2.9. Mm. And then you can tell once it's down, you know, below 80% that it actually changed to help. It's really cool because when I look at this display, you know, the cockpit of a uh, classic Porsche is so iconic, right? Uh, you have normally just the RPMs, oil temp, all that stuff. And then you have a clock here. But this is actually where you select the drive modes. Correct. So we deleted the clock, and then this has, if you put your foot on the brake. Yeah, foot on the brake, got it. So it has a dial, mm -hmm. and there's reverse. Okay. Neutral, you hear the e-brake disengage, because yep. we've gone out of park. Mm -hmm. Drive, you can switch back and forth, and go back to park. It'll have its time delay, e-brake goes back on. Now you can swipe up. Oh, and these are all the, like the other settings. Yeah, that you here's can the do. drive modes. Oh. One, two, three, four, rain mode, all of that. You can either touch home, AC control, digital. Everything is just from this. Yeah. And part of it is because the packaging, they like, I'm assuming that you could put this in pretty much any old car. Correct. And then it won't really interrupt the the aura or the feel mm -hmm. uh, of the old car. As long as it's CAN or LIN bus compatible, um, it's a full programmable. That is so cool. It's kind mm -hmm. of like Nest, like like a, <laughs> or like a home, Yeah. whatever. Set your security system, turn on your lights, you know. Yeah, that is so cool. Okay, and then what is this? This is just actual power? Yeah, that's your kilowatt output and regen. So anything below zero. Now we can scale in different drive modes how regen is. And one of the things that we have found with messing with the tuning with these, because they're super tunable. Mm -hmm. Like we would think having a dyno in-house and dealing with all these, you know, turbo NA motors that this wouldn't need much. But this is in fact more tuning than a lot of other cars that we have in. And we found that it's actually more of a vintage feel by having a lot of regen put back into the car. And what that means by regen is off throttle, it will actually slow you down to help charge the batteries. Your foot barely on the throttle and feeling in coasting mode will have zero regen then on. Well, that's very similar to you being in third or fourth gear and At like max RPM it, and then you let no, off all of a sudden and it's yeah. just like, ugh, well, it's even, like you're breaking. Yeah, even cruising, you're cruising at 3000 RPM in fourth and you let off, it's gonna, it's gonna slow you down a little bit. You can have that same pedal feel mm. and you can adjust that to the driver's specifications. And then over here you have motor temp and battery temp. Is this yes. actually something that you have to monitor or is this just there? So it's just like a coolant gauge where the battery actually has the best output and charging uh, between between 65 and 95. So it struggles on cold days. That's why it has a battery heater to bring them up to temperature. So you can drive it without it going into a protection mode. Hmm. Is there anything that doesn't work in this car? Yes. Yeah, so because you've the, moved it over. We're, electric. So there's some, some things we're still working on on this car. Uh, number one, we're switching all the cable drive AC unit to a digital mm. that's going to still have the same feel. You can see that this is a Porsche head unit that, a Porsche head unit that is an upgrade from original, but then has CarPlay, navigation, has everything that you would want. But yes, this is the next 
We have the full upgraded AC unit, but the controls need to be upgraded to like a digital be 100% controlled with mm. this oh, and okay. don't and can delete that. Oh, so that is something that we're still in the works of. Uh, this is so cool though that this talks to this mm -hmm. because it's actually showing that it's in park. Correct. Here. Yeah, that is super neat. Huh. Then next also, uh, you can hear everything in these cars. Mm -hmm. And all these cars had squeaks, groans, rattles. And after we got most of those deleted, now we're full carbon under tray to add even more felt wheel liners, foam in the tires, you know, trying to go the extra step. And that's the difference of getting in a lower end car and you can tell road noise, white noise, a lot of stuff to hop in and you actually feel like it's a well-sorted dialed chassis. It's interesting because this is gonna be a problem. Like traditionally these old cars, um, especially the 930 Turbo, if it was completely stock, it's still a really loud car. You can't talk on the you phone know? in here. It is so loud, like, but with that said, it being that loud is hiding a lot of the creaks and mm -hmm. a lot of the uh, suspension, mm -hmm. you know, all the things that are actually moving, the, the rocks hitting the, oh, the yeah. wheel liner, you know, there's just so many things that's hidden but with that said, with it being electric, it's so quiet. You can actually hear all those little imperfections. It makes me wonder in the future with these kits, if there's some kind of mechanical noise that would be pleasant to yeah. have. I know in the uh, Taycan, um, there's some kind of noise that plays, mm -hmm. right? When you're driving it. And then that, that kind of adds to the driving experience. I don't so, know, maybe this is something that just has to be developed over time. Our process was always get rid of all the noise before we start adding any. And there's a lot of different solutions for that that are elegant. One of them is you can put it through the speaker systems mm -hmm. and actually have noise canceling, noise canceling uh, harmonics that cancel them out. So then right now it's on Yes. And there's a fan going. Correct. And that's like going to a heat exchanger to cool both mm -hmm. the the batteries mm -hmm. and the motor? Correct. A separate system for each. Okay, got it. So, because the batteries also have a heater put in on it. So, when you go to charge it and it runs, it wants to make sure it's at the proper temperature and then for that. Is this functional? Like, it's actually funneling so that, air there or nope it's uh it's all on the it, under diffuser now oh. um we actually deleted those that we could use for brake ducts but it isn't really needed okay so well i think it's time for us to go for a drive i would love that yeah there's there's just so much to talk about with this kind of stuff and you know we're going to be featuring more of these builds as they become more and more popular and um it's not the right way it's not the wrong way it's just a way to build a car and there's mm -hmm. going to be just so many different ways that people are building cars heck people are probably going to be building a lot more fuel cell cars too i i thought that we would put this together and we're like well it, it was worth knowing right but then the more sorted it gets like it is quite enjoyable it's quite enjoyable to know that it's always consistent. Like the consistency level of not having a weekend project to do on this. Mm. I find that I'm very happy that we went through this process to find these solutions. And I'm happy to share it to people that are on the fence. Cause I'm not saying that this is the best way, but the juice was worth the squeeze, 100%. All right, cool. We're you're gonna you're go driving. For, yeah, we're gonna go for a little drive. Oh man. All right, so I'm getting in the driver's seat. Um, I actually did get to drive this uh, just a couple of days ago. We're at Willow Springs when I actually saw this for the first time and it blew me away, but that was just straight line speed. You know, we, we got it up to triple digit speeds, but now that we're on the roads that I drive around all the time, I think we'll take it to like a little twisty spot and um, see how it does. This is uh, gonna be cool. And we don't actually have to yell at each other because it's not gonna be that loud. That's the difference between 
shooting ice cars and uh, EV cars. Let's go through the sequence here. On. Key on. So the brake pressure switch has to be engaged for you to be able to turn it. So Got put it. on the brake card. Put on the brake and then turn it to drive. Yep. Okay. Put off the brake, make sure it's brake. in drive. Yeah, it's in drive. So it's interesting. So this is creep mode. So right? yeah, it's interesting that this has that. This is just so you can mimic more of an automatic transmission. So I don't like creep mode, but this is something for traffic. You don't have to switch over to the gas. You just let off the brake, goes forward. But that really kills us when we go drag racing because mm -hmm. you cannot give it gas with the brake on and it has to be fully disengaged before you can go to gas. So our reaction times are like 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, just because the timing, we can't cross, cross the line once we let off the brake. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So then why is it that, or, so you have it on just for ease of use right now, Yeah. but you can change it Correct. right away if you need to. Correct. So all of our drive modes currently have it, but we can make a custom drive mode and cater it to whoever the car is going to. Hmm. So then is your plan to build a lot of these vehicles or yes. whatever vehicle anybody brings you to make an EV? It's easier for me to build a line of cars and have options rather than custom one off every time. So that way the quality of work goes into the chassis straight. We take it all the way down, build it up, all the little stitch welding or anything that we need to strengthen the chassis is all implemented at that time. So, you know, working with analog, they have 40 cars that they want to build to start, which is all in line with solutions that we have in place that goes across a, a board of quality control. So we can sell a car and stand behind it rather than one off, one off, one off, one off. Being able to replicate it makes the process so much easier. It's just so interesting to me that I'm sure it's such a novelty still mm -hmm. for these EV swaps. When you pull up to the light, I'm sure people are like, why is it so quiet? Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of people when you're driving try to film and they're, they're kind of confused. <laughs> I'm like, oh man, that's exactly what, oh wait, wait a minute, where's the exhaust? Yeah, like, yeah. Well, well, why can't I hear it? Or you drive by somebody and they're, they're not expecting it. Yeah, yeah. And which, which brings up the point you said a minute ago is we do need to put some sort of noise in it you know, or have an option of noise and it can't be through the horn. It has to be through a separate speaker. I feel like I want to feel it shift. Yeah. And it's not, and it's just continuously <laughs> going. Um, I do have a question about it being a swap in California. So do you have to, do you still get letters in the mail telling you to smog this thing or how does that work? Um, no, the biggest thing is, is for safety, right? So for the smog stuff, once it becomes EV, it's exempt. You just tell them that yeah, it's EV? So do you, how do you do it? You just, is there like a form? Like, hey, I swapped a EV motor into this thing. Yeah, so there are, there is a process that you go through uh, with the California board that a simple letter is all, all we needed to do. And then once it's done, it goes in and gets a VIN verification, a, oh, light, a light check. See, they see it. Yeah. Oh, and they so, make sure you know, it has seat belts, it has all the safety mm -hmm. stuff of the era, right? And then you get, uh, there's no smog anymore. Like, so for you to be able to put a thousand horsepower swap in legally, like it's a cheat code. Right. It's eco-friendly. God. <laughs> it is a status car, 100%. Yeah. This is, a luxury. I love this so much because the manual steering really is nice. It feels like an old car. Mm -hmm. And also the brakes too. So are the brakes assisted at all or is it fully manual? Nope, it is a, uh, that vacuum pump. So it has the vacuum assist, and which is actually more consistent than pulling vacuum off the motor because it's different at high RPM compared to idle. 
and you'll have a difference of pedal feedback. This, we set up the vacuum pump to maintain. So it's a very constant, consistent pressure. You'll hear it a stoplight. If you pump the brakes, you'll hear Oh, got it, got a it. A little cycle of it. Huh. But like 4.8 being a lot, is it a lot heavier in the front than the rear? Nope, it's exactly the same weight distribution huh. as the factory. And with the things that we have upgraded of bushings and brakes and everything else, it's less of a Widowmaker. Got it. So this has traction control now that is GPS, throttle position, torque based. So it's a calculation of speed. No matter if you floor it, it'll only give a certain percentage of power at this speed with the traction level we set up. That so there's no it. wheel speed sensors, it's all torque based. Right, it's pretty much dummy proof at this point. So the thing where it's not yet is if you go through a puddle right now mm. and you were on, it will wheel slip until it catches itself. Until it sees a discrepancy. It just feels so tight. So I'm gonna go down this little canyon road that I usually go down and then uh, we'll see how it runs. <laughs> it's just so... <laughs> it's, it's different in the passenger seat because so I'm weird. not expecting yeah. when you're yeah. gonna do it. So <laughs> I'm like... All right, so we're kind of on this little canyon road and this is interesting because this is something that I think we'll all have to learn as we're driving more EV vehicles. It's not really gear-based cornering, right? Because mm -hmm. a lot of times I'll know, okay, I'm going into a third gear corner or a second gear corner. Yeah. Um, this is more just like speed and feel-based. Yeah, and this is where the regen, like a high load regen would be very beneficial because then you don't have to apply brake. Got it. You just let off. Yeah, you can just let off and choose by your throttle position what you really want to do. Do you think you would uh, eventually build an all-wheel drive version of something like yes. this? Yes, already in the works. Got it. Yeah, because right now it's minimal regen because as soon as I let go, it's yep. like it's coasting in neutral almost. Correct. So that's a setting that we put in there and uh, I don't have it pre-programmed. It's as easy as plugging in the laptop though. Got it. But yeah, everything else works. The turn signal works, mm -hmm. um, headlights. All of it. That's a full LED conversion on it, which is amazing at night because this is easy to outdrive the lights. <laughs> it's just don't give me mid sentence, Sorry. man. Sorry. You gotta you gotta you gotta wait for me. This to is talk. just so. It's just such a different <laughs> feeling. I just don't expect it from this, really. Does it feel stable? Yeah, it feels really stable. Um, I, I do have to say, what, what surprises me the most is how, even though I'm already moving, when I punch it, it's like I was just still and I just punched it. Yeah. It's just so much acceleration. Um, and of course, as it's starting to go up in speed, it starts to taper off. But, geez, just pulling out of the corners is... So if we put it into crazy. a heavier performance mode, it won't plateau. So it, would, it would keep climbing and not have, because then we could take it all the way up to 500 foot-pounds output instead of 450. Wow, this is crazy. This is awesome. I mean, I'm not pushing it, but I'm driving, you know. Well, the, if you had the noise of the motor, it would feel <laughs> yeah. like you were pushing it. Yeah. So if you, that's true. You know, that's true. if you dubbed over, it'd be like, <laughs> oh man, we were really killing yeah, it. Yeah. But here it's just, <laughs> right now. It's but, just so quiet. So, so imagine this, like you're coming home at 2 a.m. this same neighborhood. You oh. drive however you want because nobody's yeah. calling the cops. Yeah. A couple of my cars, if I drive on this road, it's, they don't get, the neighbors are not happy <laughs> because yeah. they're very loud. Jeez. <laughs> 
This is this is a full on you just didn't modern think, sports car. You just didn't think we were doing 85 right there, you know? Yeah, I I can't believe how, how good this is. Brakes are good, thank goodness, because yeah. it needs it. So then eventually do you think you'll be able to program in like a launch control? Yes. Oh. <laughs> well, we're at freeway speed. Oh. Yes. Okay, 80 <laughs> like that. That was so quick. And it's, we can it have comes it. on so nice. Like, it, I could tell that it's making sure I have enough traction. Yeah. At first, especially when you're stomping it from zero. Mm -hmm. And then once it feels like it has enough traction, it's not slipping or anything. Yeah. It's just adding more power and more power to the point where it's full 100% power. Huh? And we can dial that in for, we can put a grippier set of tires on and turn it up and it could be faster. Oh, but man. in this situation, we have kind of over simplified it to where you put 10 more PSI in the tires, it isn't gonna peel out, you know? It isn't at the ragged edge. This yeah. is in protection mode. You can't even tell, like right now, wind, you know, blowing in my face, just on the freeway, just chilling out. I can't really tell that. I'm driving an EV car. I just feel like I'm driving an old Porsche. Yeah. And I love this. We didn't even talk about the fact that there's no shifter here anymore. Mm -hmm. Traditionally, this is the transmission tunnel and shifter. So did you flatten this area out at all? Nope. All we did was take the shifter out and the e-brake out and covered it. So we did delete panels for the holes. We didn't have to weld them in. They just pop in. And the it's center even, tunnel is is covered in a separate piece than the floorboards. So you go back to an ICE system again, and you can bolt those right in and put the other tunnel cover in. We'll close out the video here. That was cool. Um, it was very nerdy. Sorry for that. <laughs> I hope you guys are still with us. You had a lot of great questions. Yeah, well, so. there's just a lot I want to know because... Um, I wanna always do my best to cover all aspects of car culture. You know, this is the newest, latest, and greatest thing. And if this means that we get to keep these chassis on the road, I'm okay with it. Um, but with that said, this is just a tiny, 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 tiny little percentage of the 930s uh, and the older air-cooled Porsches on the road. I mean. We went to Lufka Cult. You guys probably saw the Lufka Cult video. Air-cooled Porsches, internal combustion Porsches are bigger than ever, and they're not going any. They're not going away anytime soon. Um, in fact, I mean, you look at all the newest cars. I, I mean, I had a chance to drive the 992 GT3, and that was the best car I've ever driven. Period. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so yeah, they're, they're not going to be gone anytime soon. But this is just a different way to tune these. And just so people know, like, I have the other Porsches, right? I have 964, I have, you know, even the 27, a lot of different variations of 911s and 912s, and I appreciate all of them in what they can provide. And this is just a different aspect of what this provides in this chassis, and it's the ultimate performance, because I can't compare it to any of the other turbo cars that we have. And it doesn't feel to me, and hopefully to you as well, that it's missing really anything but sound. You know, my business is based on turning money into noise. And now I'm turning money into <laughs> no noise. Yeah. So. Definitely in terms of smiles for miles, this thing is awesome a lot of fun every time i get on it it's just the acceleration's crazy it's so good well, people are probably wondering from the outside like why is it so quiet <laughs> well we'll have to do some comparison of how fast it actually is compared to another car but yeah. maybe that'll be next time cool all right thank you guys Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to support us directly, go to LarryChenPrints.com. I print and sign every single one of these. This is the perfect gift or it's the perfect piece of art for your wall.